Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Ruach HaOlam Asher Kichanu V'mitzvotam V'tzivanu Lehadlik Neshel Yom Tov V'tzivanu When the storm passes over and the wave rushes to Asana the Shakur sea, taught us together it is our duty to fight for our freedom. We raise this first glass to her and to our continued fight and to our ancestors who believed in collective freedom and liberation. Fred Hampton, Harriet Tubman, Toussaint Frederick Douglass, Marsha P. Johnson, Sylvia Rivera, a blessing memory. And we say the blessing, or actually we can sing it, Baruch Atadonai, Eloheinu Melech where we cannot begin to discuss reparations because Puerto Rico is still a colony. Water is all that separates us from Rikers Island just out of sight a few miles upriver. In your heart of hearts, are you grateful for that separation? Is the river a cold barrier or a connecting thread binding you to them and to all of us to the sea, to our ancestors and our homelands? A river can be a vehicle of escape, a means of migration. Like Moses and Harriet, it can take us where we need to go, but only if the chains of our debts are dragging us down. We came here tonight to dance. It is hard to dance in chains. We know we have been doing it, and doing it beautifully for far too long. In this moment, we embrace our liberation and embody our vision. We have nothing to lose but our chains. We normally call them slave narratives. But what of our freedom narratives? The narratives that recount our ancestors' lives before slavery, leading to their lives after it. Like the freedom narrative of Venture Smith, I was born in Dukandara in Guinea around 1729. My father was the prince of our tribe. I went to the person who claimed ownership of them as slaves, and they asked for a plot of land to build their new land together. He looked at them and said, I was nice to you people. Some of the other folks done you way worse, and I could have done you worse too. I don't owe you anything in this moment. You got your emancipation and now I'm out a whole field of slaves. And Cujo and his people got together and they figured out how to form their own town. They called it Africa Town. And they lived there and they raised their children there and they tried their best to realize freedom in a place that still wanted to hold them in bondage. And they buried their dead there. And up until this year, 
So few of us had heard this story. We understand, just like our ancestors, our liberation could never be given or taken away. It's ours. This night we remember this feeling because we know we will have to return to this well again and again to sustain ourselves to make it through the hard times. Or like the freedom narrative of Sylvia King. I was born in Morocco. I was married and I had three children. Or like the freedom narrative of Mahoma Gardo Bukawa Kawa. I was born in modern day West Africa in the 1820s and I was raised Muslim. Our stories, our freedom narratives, they are rich, they are deep, and they are beautiful. And I encourage all of us to dig deeper into the well of our history, so deep that we can reach that cool and refreshing memory of liberation. Tonight, we will hear stories of our ancestors' journey to freedom, like we hear every Passover. But tonight, we will lean in like our ancestors did as the griot enliven us. Ah!